Let's build a simple JavaScript timer using set interval and make it fancy. By the end of this three part video series, we will have taken a blank screen and made it look like this. You are going to learn about JavaScript, HTML, CSS, animation, set interval, code sandbox, radio buttons, accessibility, and hot module reloading. The list goes on and on, but don't worry, we are going to take this slow. And by the end of this video, you might have become a vanilla JavaScript expert. Go to codesandbox.io. This is where we will be writing all of our code. Start by making a code sandbox environment and we're gonna click on the vanilla JavaScript template. We land directly into the JavaScript file where we can see we can do auto updates. We have an HTML file that links to the JavaScript file as well as a CSS file. Let's move back to our JavaScript file. Code sandbox auto updates for us as we type. Therefore, you might see false errors. We can definitely turn this off if you don't like it. Go to File, Preferences, Code Sandbox Settings, and click on Preview. Now toggle Preview on Edit Off. If we try this again and save, we no longer get those false errors. I am going to turn the auto updates back on. Again, that's File, Preferences, Code Sandbox Settings, Preview, Preview on Edit. Let's begin by removing this code. We need a start time for our countdown timer, and we can save that into a variable called start minute and make that equal to one. Our timer is gonna be based off seconds. Let's store that in a variable called time. We are going to take the start minute times 60, and that will give us the correct seconds. Let's create a function called update countdown. This is where most of our JavaScript logic will go. And while we're at it, we can just call the function. I know this might be a little bit weird, but we're going to take the seconds and turn it back into minutes. It will all make sense soon. Let's create a variable called minutes and assign it to the time divided by 60. Let's go ahead and console out the minutes to see what we get. In Code Sandbox, we can see all of our logs by going to the bottom and clicking on console. I'm going to save it just to refresh the logs. Perfect, we have one minute. But what happens when we only have 30 seconds? We get a decibel number and we definitely don't want that. Instead, we need to round it down and we can do that with math.floor. Now we have zero minutes, but we know we have seconds, so let's work on that next. Create a variable called seconds and get the time that is left over from a minute. We'll go ahead and console log seconds as well. As you see, we now have 30 seconds. Turn start minute back to one so we can work with one minute. We will be using set interval to help us with the countdown timer. It is a function that repeatedly calls another function with a fixed time delay between each call. Set interval lives on the window, which is considered part of the global state. But the thing is, Code Sandbox doesn't always know how to update global state correctly. Code Sandbox uses hot module reloading, which allows us to see our changes as we make them. Long story short, instead of causing a hard page reload to refresh the app, hot module reloading knows what part of local state, not global state, code needs to be updated on the fly. Honestly, hot module reloading is a bunch of magic. And if that went over your head, that is totally okay, cause it's not that important to know. Just know we need to tell Code Sandbox to do a hard page reload because we're using set interval, which lives on the window. Make a new file called sandbox.config.json. Now turn on hard reload on change. Let's continue coding and go back to our JS file. We are going to wrap set interval around our function call and call it every 1000 milliseconds, which equals one second. Nice, our function is being called every one second now, but we need to decrease the time variable every time the function is called. Oops, an error, time is read only. So we are going to redefine it as a let instead of a cons. What? Okay, our time is now being updated every second. This is perfect. Users aren't going to be looking in the console for the countdown. Instead, let's add it to the DOM. 
Start off by going to the index.html file and add a paragraph tag to the file. Fill in the paragraph tag with 00, 00 colon 00, 00. Great. Let's make that a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. Go to your CSS file and we're going to use the selector P and we're going to make the font size 5 rem. Perfect. Back in our JS file, create a variable called countdown. And we're going to document.query select the paragraph tag. Take the countdown and set the inner text to equal the minutes plus a string colon plus the seconds. There we go. But there's a problem. We always want the countdown to have four digits. Let's remove the console log because we don't need it anymore. Redefine minutes to use let. Take minutes and reassign it. If minutes is less than 10, we will use the string zero plus minutes or just use the minutes. Now we have two digits for the minute. Next, we're going to do the same thing for seconds. Redefine the seconds variable to use let. Then take seconds and reassign it. Then we'll do if seconds is less than 10, we will use the string zero plus seconds or just use seconds. Heck yeah, now we have a four digit countdown timer, but there is a one second delay. In order to fix that, we'll call update countdown right before our set interval. Change start minute to 0.05 to get three seconds because I have something to show you. Wait for it. Look at all those negative numbers. This is an easy fix. If the time is less than or equal to zero, then we want to clear the interval. The function takes one argument and that's the interval that you want to clear. Let's name our current interval to set countdown. Now that our interval is named, we can add it as an argument to clear interval. Sweet. Now we don't get any negative numbers. Let's move the CSS import into the HTML file to help eliminate some of the style flashing. To head over to our CSS file, we're going to reset all the HTML tags, margin to zero and padding to zero. We are going to do our styling in a different browser tab. Click the button in the top right corner to open a new tab. Then click this button to close the preview. We are going to go ahead and give the body a background color of hashtag BFBAB0 and we will get a beige color. Let's center the clock on the page by using display flex, justify content center, and align item center. Okay, let's give the body some height and make it 100% view height. Ooh la la! We're going to use body colon before to add a nice visual effect with content and give it a string. A background color of hashtag D2CEC9, a width of 30%, and a height equal to 100%. We don't want the body before to take up any content space, so we're going to use position fix and move it to the left with top zero left zero. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Now let's style the timer. Give the text some color of white, hashtag FFF. Make it bigger with the font size of 130 pixels. And let's beef up the text with the font weight of 300. Oops, we need a little bit more contrast to the colors and we can do that by adding a background color. Let's go back to our HTML and add a div around the paragraph tag. We need to be able to style this div, so give it the class name of clock. Back in our CSS file, select the clock and give it the background color of hashtag 968E85. Ooh, love the contrast, but it's a little bit tight. So let's add some padding of 48 pixels and a border radius of 12 pixels. And there you have it, a working JavaScript timer. That wasn't too bad, right? Now that you spent this time following this tutorial, what can you do with it? Well, you can share the code on Twitter, or you can come back for the next video where we will be going over radio buttons to allow the user to change the time value, 
as well as be able to start and stop the timer. But I think the most important thing you can do right now with this timer is build on top of it. Maybe you can make the timer not only show seconds and minutes, but also hours. Make the timer also count up instead of down. And also add a button so the user can toggle between the two. Or you can make the CSS more responsive. Currently in the mobile view, there's a bug. See if you can fix it. Google things, break the code. The idea is to always learn on your own. I would love to see what advancements you made to this timer. Feel free to share it in the comments below. And if you like the content, make sure you smash that like button. Thank you so much for watching this video. Till next time, peace.